Here's the top South Florida cities you can afford to live in based on your salary or your combined household income if you're married or splitting with someone else. We're talking Palm Beach and Broward County today. I have a city that will absolutely blow you away, which I'll cover towards the end, so make sure you stick around for that. Few things I wanna mention before we jump into the list is that these are medium home prices. We're basing it off data I was able to pull from the Realtor Association. There's options available at almost every price point, but this gives you an idea of what it costs to buy into these cities. If you didn't know, South Florida isn't cheap, and some of these numbers might surprise you. I picked the cities that are most requested to try to keep this video from running too long let's talk property taxes now this is really for another video and can get complicated when you factor in millage rates which is defined as a dollars charge for each thousand dollars of value and it changes per city which is the most accurate way to calculate your property taxes but just to give you an idea in simpler terms and another way to look at it is to base it on the effective property tax rate which is the percentage of your home's actual market value that you'll pay in property taxes each year all you have to do is multiply what your home is worth by the effective property tax rate and and that's roughly how much you should expect to pay in property tax. For example, if the effective property tax rate in your county is 1% and your house is worth 300,000, that means you'll owe about $3,000 in property taxes. Now, you also have homestead exemption, which lowers the tax rate, but we'll get into that on another video. Here are the average effective property tax rates for Broward and Palm Beach County, since these are the two counties I'm covering in this video. According to smartasset.com, in Broward County, the average effective property tax rate is 1.2%, and in Palm Beach County, the average effective property property tax rate is 1.11%. As for homeowners insurance, us in real estate use a 1% average when calculating, but of course, insurers considered a wide range of factors like age, condition, location of the home, the value of the personal property, and the types of coverage you decide to hold. For many, insurance policies have increased and in many cases have doubled, but for the sake of this video and having a baseline, we're going with 1% of the purchase price. I'm not gonna factor in HOA because it varies based on each homeowner's association if there is one to begin with. I'm gonna assume there's 10% down on each home, which is realistic in today's market, but remember that any less than 20%, you have to pay private mortgage insurance or PMI, so we'll factor that into the payment. So you'll have principal, interest, taxes, insurance, and PMI for each mortgage payment. It's not 100% accurate, but at least this gives you a pretty good idea of what it will be and how much you need to make to afford the mortgage payment. One other thing I wanna mention before we jump into the list is that based on lending terms, the traditional rule of thumb has been that you shouldn't apply more than 28% of your monthly gross income to your mortgage payment. So we're gonna use a 28% mortgage rule and just round it up to 30%. You could push it up to 45, but let's be responsible here. I also wanna mention that we're going to be looking at the numbers for the median townhome or condo on another video in the near future in case you prefer a townhome villa or condo and you're looking for a more affordable option. Make sure to subscribe so you're notified when that drops. My name is Jonathan. I've been a South Florida resident for most of my life and a real estate agent for almost 20 years. My real estate team and I, we get calls, texts, emails, and messages on social media every single day from people that are just like you that are looking to make a move to South Florida. And we're all about building relationships so whether you're looking to make a move in a week in a month or even in a year it's okay send us a text send me a message on social media Instagram Facebook and we'd be more than happy to help you make your best move yet all of our information is in the description below if this is your first time on the channel and you want to learn more about life in South Florida then make sure to subscribe and turn on the notifications so you get notified when a new video drops don't forget to hit the like button because that helps get this video out to more people let's get to it now let's start with the salary or combined household income of between between $150,000 to $190,000 per year. Number one is Pompano Beach with a population of around 113,874 people. Median income price is $480,000. The monthly payment on a single family house with 10% down at 7% interest rate would be around $3,826. The monthly income needed to afford at 30% of your income would be around $12,800. This means you need to earn about $153,600 per year to afford a home in Pompano Beach. Pompano Beach has one of the lowest medium home prices in Broward County, but there's other options that you can find around Pompano Beach that is more affordable. In the recent years, Pompano Beach has been going through a revitalization and it's becoming a place where more and more people are moving to. I'm using Pompano Beach because it's a city that is requested often, but if you're looking for a city that is even more affordable than Pompano Beach, make sure to check out some of the cities close by like Lauderhill, Margate, Tamarack, 
and North Lauderdale. Of course, if you wanna know all about Pompano Beach, you can check out our full community tour that we did on Pompano Beach so you can get a better idea of what properties and the community looks like there. Next on that list is West Palm Beach. Population is around 127,014 people. The median home price is $500,000. Monthly payment on the house with 10% down at 7% would be around $3,949. The monthly income required to afford at 30% is $13,200. You need about $158,400 per year to afford to live in West Palm Beach. If you wanna dive a little deeper into West Palm Beach, we've created a city guide video as well. The thing you need to know about West Palm Beach is that it's a large city and goes from the ocean west to Loxahatchee. If you look out east, what you'll most likely find are historic homes, high-end luxury homes and condos. There isn't much new construction, but currently you will find two high-rise luxury condo buildings, La Clara and Olara, but that's pretty much it. There's a ton of construction downtown, so be on the lookout for others in the near future. If you want a reasonable single-family home community, there's currently only one, and that is Symphony Place, with those homes selling starting at around $600,000. Next on the list is Boynton Beach, and the population is currently around 82,089 people. Medium home price is $520,000. Monthly payment on a house that you're putting 10% down at 7%. Interest rate is around $4,106. Monthly income required to afford a home in Boynton Beach at 30% is around $13,700. That means you need an income of around $164,400 per year to afford to live in Boynton Beach. Boynton Beach is smaller than Pompano Beach and West Palm Beach, but it's also a coastal town and there's a lot to do. Majority of the homes east have been there for many years, so if you're looking for a newer home, then make sure to look further west. In the last 20 years, we've seen a huge increase in homes by GL Homes west of the Turnpike building all of the different canyon communities. It's also now become the go-to for 55 plus active adult luxury communities. Along Lions Road, you have Valencia Bay, Valencia Cove, Valencia Reserve, Valencia Sound, and the newest one, Valencia Grand. If you're over 55 and you're looking for a resort style living, then Boynton Beach is your place. Of course, if you want to know more about Boynton Beach, we have a 10 minute city guide right here that you can check out that will give you more of the details of life in Boynton Beach. Next on the list is Lake Worth Beach. The population is around 42,219 people. Medium home price is $540,000. Monthly payment on a house putting down 10% at 7% interest is around $4,264. Monthly income required to afford a home in Lake Worth Beach at 30% is around $14,200, which means you need a household income of around $170,400 per year to afford buying a home in Lake Worth Beach. Just to make sure we're clear, I'm only referring to Lake Worth Beach and not unincorporated Lake Worth, which is further west. Lake Worth Beach is a mixed bag and you'll find mostly older homes and cottages. I would say the most coveted neighborhood in Lake Worth Beach is College Park with prices starting at $500,000 and go up to just under $2 million. Next we head 45 minutes south to Coconut Creek, population around 57,548 people. Medium home price is $571,000. Monthly payment if you put 10% down at a 7% interest rate is around $4,552. Monthly income required to afford a home in Coconut Creek at 30% is around $15,250, which means you need a household income of around $183,000 per year to afford buying a home in Coconut Creek. People love living here because they're centrally located and sandwiched between Coral Springs, Parkland, Boca Raton, Deerfield Beach, and Pompano Beach. The Florida Turnpike and 995 are just a short drive away, and plus you have the Seminole Casino and Butterfly World there. There isn't any new construction there at the moment, but the location and proximity to everything, as well as the more affordable homes relative to the area, makes Coconut Creek a great option. If you're interested in learning more about Coconut Creek, make sure to check out this video that we did all about things Coconut Creek. Now, let's step up if you're between 190,000 to 220,000 per year. First on our list, we head to Southwest Broward to the city of Pembroke Pines with a population of around 170,358 people and a medium home price of $605,000. If you put down 10%, financing the other 90%, at a 7% interest rate, you'll have a mortgage payment of around $4,823. That means that a monthly income required to afford a home in Pembroke Pines at 30% is around $16,100. The household income necessary to buy a single family home starts at around $193,200 per year. Pembroke Pines is only 30 minutes from downtown Miami, which makes it attractive for those that commute to work or wanna be close to the Miami nightlife. Merrick Square and Sunset Pines are the two newest communities. If you're in the market for a town, 
townhouse priced between $600,000 and $700,000. Next on the list is Davie, which is just north and the population is currently around 107,795 people. Medium home price is $650,000. Monthly payment on a house that you're putting 10% down at a 7% interest rate is around $5,182. The monthly income required to afford a home in Davie at 30% is around $17,300. That means you need an income of around $207,600 per year to afford to live in Davie. One of the major perks of living in Davie is you're close to both Fort Lauderdale and Miami and not far from the beaches if that's your thing. It's also popular amongst college students as it hosts the South Florida Educational Center, which houses Florida Atlantic University, University of Florida, uh, Broward University, and of course, Nova Southeastern University. The only new construction you'll find in Davie at the moment is Crescent Ridge, which is Lennar's newest estate style community, and it's not cheap. Prices start from 1.1 million. Next on our list is Coral Springs. Population is around 133,825 people. The medium home price is $668,000. Monthly payment on the house with 10% down at 7% would be around $5,325. The monthly income required to afford at 30% is $17,300. You need about $213,600 per year to afford to live in Coral Springs. Coral Springs is known for its excellent schools, safe neighborhoods, numerous parks, healthcare facilities, and recreational facilities. Coral Springs places a high emphasis on education and is home to 26 top rated schools, including 18 public and eight private schools. This gives you a variety of options to choose from for your kids. As far as location, it's 40 miles away from Miami. Fort Lauderdale is 20 miles southeast and West Palm Beach is roughly 50 miles north. Coral Springs is fully built out as for new construction, but you do have one townhome community built by Lennar called Sunset Trails, which is located at Wiles Road and Coral Ridge Drive and prices range anywhere from $600,000 to $665,000. If you like Coral Springs and you want to learn more, I created a video that's all about Coral Springs that you could check out. Next on the list, we stay in Broward County and head south to the city of Plantation. Population is around 101,750 people. The medium home price is $675,000. Monthly payment on the house with 10% down at 7% would be around $5,381. The monthly income required to afford at 30% is $18,000. You need about $216,000 per year to afford to live in plantation. We're moving up there between the $220,000 to $250,000 salary range. Now, moving on up in income brings us to Wellington. It's not as large as some of the other cities mentioned, but don't be fooled. This city has a strong population of 61,616 people and is considered the equestrian capital of the world. The medium home price in Wellington is $720,000. Monthly payment on the house with 10% down at 7% is roughly $5,685. And the monthly income using the 30% mortgage rule is $19,000. That means you would need an annual household income of $228,000. The city is known for its wealth of stunning rural luxury real estate and its contrast to the county's more metropolitan beachfront communities. The horse riding culture is strong here as well as the sport of polo with Wellington being home to the most prestigious polo venue in the world the International Polo Club. If you're looking for new construction, then head just west to Arden where you'll find plenty of new homes in all different price ranges. To see what Wellington has to offer, we made a video explaining what life is like here, so make sure to check this out. Heading back south, we land on the city of Fort Lauderdale. It's got the biggest population of all the cities we're reviewing with 185,416 people. The medium home price in Fort Lauderdale is $729,000. Monthly payment on a house with 10% down at 7% would put you around $5,812. The monthly income required to afford at 30% is $19,500. You need about $234,000 per year to be able to call Fort Lauderdale home. Now, Fort Lauderdale is a large city that covers a lot, so it's very area specific. And remember, this is the median price of all homes in the city, so it can really vary. Nicknamed the Venice of America, the city's filled with entertainment options, thriving arts and culture scene, beautiful beaches, and so much more. It's located about 30 miles north of Miami, so if you get tired of all the fun in Fort Lauderdale, then you can take a short drive south to Miami. And by the way, if you wanna know everything you need to know about Fort Lauderdale, make sure to check out our full city tour of Fort Lauderdale.
Next on our list is Delray Beach. Population is around 67,784 people. Medium home price is $752,000. Monthly payment on the house with 10% down at 7% would be around $5,932. The monthly income required to afford a home at 30% is $20,000. You need a minimum of $240,000 per year to afford to live in Delray Beach. Delray is at the top of many lists because of how charming it is. It's a historic town and many locals love it because of how warm and friendly the atmosphere is. It definitely gives you small town vibes, including being voted most fun small town in America by USA Today. They do a great job of keeping it that way. You're not going to find any towering skyscrapers, but you will find various boutiques, cafes, restaurants, historic homes, and fun attractions for the entire family. Delray also has some of the best beaches in the entire state. There's no shortage of things to do here. It's just a matter of what you feel like doing. If Delray Beach has your attention, we made a city guide video all about Delray Beach in less than 10 minutes that I think you'll enjoy. Now we're moving into the upper echelon income bracket of $270,000 to $320,000. There's a couple of cities that you can afford to live in if you fit in that bracket. Number one is Boca Raton. Population of around 99000 435 people, medium home price around $850,000. Monthly payment on a house with 10% down at 7% would be around $6,705. Monthly income required to afford at 30% would be $22,500. That means you need a salary or a total household income of $270,000 per year to afford a home in Boca Raton. Boca Raton is known for a lot of things, but let's start with top education, schools, and universities. You have four colleges that call Boca Raton home. Some of the best public schools and private schools are in Boca Raton and one of the main reasons why so many people live or want to live here. This city has a growing foodie culture and shopping here is plentiful with Town Center Mall and all of the boutiques in and around the city. Boca has beautiful beaches and expect to find some of the most incredible homes you'll ever see in your life here. Boca Raton has been referred to as the Beverly Hills of the East Coast and it's obvious why. Some of the most expensive real estate in the US is here in Boca. If you want a home on the golf course, it's here. If you want a home where you can park your yacht behind your home, it's here. If you want the country club lifestyle, it's here. If you want an active adult community over the age of 55, it's here. If you prefer downtown living and want to live in a luxury condo, it's here. Literally, Boca Raton has something for everyone, as long as they can afford it, of course. I've made several videos about Boca Raton, so if you're interested in this city and want to learn more, check out these videos about Boca. Moving on to the next. Next on the list, we head 30 miles south to Weston. Population around 68,077 people. Medium home price is $855,000. Monthly payment, if you put 10% down at a 7% interest rate, is around $6,817. Monthly income required to afford a home in Weston at 30% is around $22,750. That means you need a household income of $273,000 per year to afford buying a home in Weston. Weston is known for its affluent neighborhoods, excellent schools, low crime rate, and numerous parks and recreational amenities, making it a desirable place to call home. Weston consistently ranks as one of the best places to live in Florida. The schools are probably the primary motivator for most people looking to move here. They are top notch from elementary to high school, which can be a rarity in South Florida. To some, Weston seems out of the way being close to the Everglades, but you're only a 20 minute drive to Fort Lauderdale and a 30 to 45 minute drive to Miami. I would say that Weston is the epitome of suburban living at its finest. Next on the List, we go two hours north back into Palm Beach County to the city of Jupiter. Population of around 61,248 people, medium home price around $950,000. Monthly payment on a house with 10% down at 7% would be around $7,494. Monthly income required to afford at 30% would be $25,000. That means you need a salary or a total household income of around $300,000 per year to afford a home in Jupiter. Why is it expensive to live in Jupiter? Jupiter residents generally cite the high quality of life as one of the city's best advantages. Stunning beaches and scenic landscapes add to the relaxed vibe, and it's a great place to raise a family because of its suburban urban atmosphere. The nightlife, bar scene, and restaurant industry of Jupiter, Florida are all flourishing. There's a wide variety of cafes, pubs, movie theaters, and stores to check out. Golf is prevalent here with so many PGA Tour players calling Jupiter home. If you're a boating enthusiast, you'll love it here with the three miles of coastline and waterways. If you're a golfer and want to play golf all year round, well, then there's no better place to live than Jupiter. 
rounding this bracket and heading only 15 minutes south is Palm Beach Gardens. Population is around 61,467 people. The medium home price is $965,000. Monthly payment on a house with 10% down at 7% would be around $7,612. The monthly income required to afford at 30% is $25,500. That means that you need a salary of about $306,000 per year to afford to live in Palm Beach Gardens. Piggybacking on what I mentioned about Jupiter, Palm Beach Gardens is another city where golf is really popular and a way of life. Palm Beach Gardens is experiencing rapid growth that most of Northern Palm Beach County is seeing. You'll find a lot of gated communities and a variety of outdoor activities such as swimming, boating, fishing, surfing, and lush greens at the PGA National Golf Course. Living in Palm Beach Gardens isn't cheap, but it's worth it if you're looking for great shopping, excellent schools, a strong job market, and low crime rate. Surprisingly, we haven't created a video for Palm Beach Gardens yet, but be on the lookout because we're gonna be making one soon. Too many people have reached out to ask us about Palm Beach Gardens, so we have no choice but to give the people what they want. Last but not least, our final income bracket in the top of the top, we have two cities that are awesome to live in and extremely popular. People who live in these two cities don't leave. We're talking about an income bracket of 350,000 to 450,000. First on our list is Parkland. Population is around 40,003 people. The medium home price is around $1.1 million. Monthly payment on a house with 10% down at 7% would be around $8,768. Monthly income required to afford at 30% would be $29,250. That means you need a total household income of around $351,000 per year to afford a home in Parkland. People are drawn to Parkland because of its posh neighborhoods, extensive park system, and closeness to Fort Lauderdale and Boca Raton, which is just a short drive east. Not to mentioned the excellent schools. One of the main reasons people love Parkland is because the public schools are so well rated. Most are families and Parkland is very family friendly so you combine that with great schools, new homes, low crime, a ton of parks with organized activities and sports for the kids and you can see why Parkland is at the top of everyone's list. Other than the sad event that took place years back at Stoneman Douglas, Parkland is extremely safe and everyone that I know who lives in Parkland loves it. A big driver to Parkland in the past 15 years is all of the new construction. Parkland has really been built up with so many new luxury communities and continues to build more. You're getting a home that is new and comparable to prices in Boca Raton, it makes Parkland more attractive. I have a thorough video explaining what it's like in Parkland, so make sure to check it out. Next on our list, we stay in Broward and just head east towards the ocean. There, you'll find the next city, which is Lighthouse Point. Population of around 10,468 people. Medium home price is around $1.375 million. Monthly income on a house with 10% down at 7% would be around $10,960. Monthly income required to afford at 30% would be $36,500. That means you need a total household income of around $438,000 per year to afford a home in Lighthouse Point. Now, Lighthouse Point and Parkland couldn't be any more different from each other, but you can't go wrong with either. It ultimately comes down to a few things. Both are very safe and have families, but the main difference is that if you're looking to live out east and want to be minutes from the ocean, then Lighthouse Point is the place for you. Lighthouse Point is one of the top cities in all of Florida for boating with its miles of intracoastal waterways and inlet that leads right into the Atlantic Ocean. Lighthouse Point residents love living in this small but vibrant area. You won't find new construction communities because, well, it's all built out and there isn't any open land, but what you will notice if you drive through Lighthouse Point are all of the spec modern contemporary homes that are being built replacing old Florida homes from over 50 years ago. For many who grow up in Lighthouse Point, if they don't move out of the area, they tend to stay in Lighthouse Point. It really is a great place to live and you can't beat the location. Check out my five minute city guide that I created about all the things Lighthouse Point. I promised you a bonus city and if you made it this far, thank you. I wonder if you know what city this is. I'm talking about the city of Palm Beach or what us locals call Palm Beach or the island. The population is small at roughly around 9,241 people. The medium home prices, wait for it, $9.3 million. Before I go over the numbers, I wanna preface it by saying that majority of the people buying in Palm Beach at that price or higher 
are usually paying cash or private loans from their banker or brokerage accounts. But for the fun of it and to keep with the theme of this video, let's see what those numbers come out to. Usually for this size of a loan, it's going to require 30% down payment. Let's look at the numbers. The monthly payment on a house with 30% down at 7% is around $61,769. The monthly income required to afford at 30% debt to income would be $210,000 per month. To afford a home in Palm Beach Island, your salary or household income needs to total $2.5 million per year. What can I say? Palm Beach has everything you could ever want except for the price. Known for its dazzling beaches, beachfront estates, upscale boutiques, legendary resorts, excellent schools, and great dining, it's no wonder Palm Beach is such a popular destination. Once a prevalent location for wealthy individuals to vacation amongst the fancy hotels and resorts built mainly by Henry Flagler, this area is now commonplace for retirees and wealthy families to want to move to. This should give you a good overview of how much it's going to cost to live in the different cities based on your salary or total household income. A Miami video will be coming soon, so be on the lookout for that, as well as a townhome and condo breakdown for all three counties. If you have any questions at all, make sure you reach out and give us a call or text, and we'd be happy to have a conversation with you about your current situation. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and if you want to figure out which county is for you, check out the video I made about all three counties and what you can expect. I'll see you in the next video.